what's going on welcome back to the channel so today i want to go over some of my recent transactions so i did a video a couple days back where i went over my plans for my options so i do want to really rebrand this channel to basically a lot of my day-to-day -day transactions and and things along those lines so as promised i did do some options today that i wanted to share with you so i'm going to go over all the things that you need to know but first make sure i just hit that thumbs up and with that let's get right to it so starting off i did do some options today didn't do any yesterday only because of this so this is current layout for the week you do have cpi wednesday ppi thursday you have the debate after hours today monday and tuesday are primarily kind of just technical driven days. So ultimately when it comes down to technical driven days, yeah, I can give you some reasons on why it would be bullish, bearish, up, down, sideways, but ultimately it's just flipping a coin. Um, so this is why on kind of layouts like this, I typically don't do options on the Monday. And to be fully fair, most of my weekly options is done on Thursday and Friday and I'll kind of explain on why. But um, again, I didn't do any yesterday. And plus in general, I did short um, Palantir yesterday. So that did take up quite a lot of my margin. So I wanna go over that in a second, but this is my current layout. So I'll have to blank out this uh, kind of number right up here, but pretty much you see everything right here, a lot of transparency and whatever else. So I do have this right here. So this is my closed short position. So I did open it yesterday, uh, closed it today, made as you can kind of see 2300. So I was actually shorting roughly around 100,000 or I think it's like $95,000 worth of pound here. So um, I like to trade without emotion. I think a lot of investors don't do that enough they get so fixated be like i love this stock this is the best stock yes that is could be true but if you take the emotion out you can easily swing trade and do whatever else so this is why uh, at the same time i'm not greedy i like to kind of just take be very risk adverse especially in this account so i have multiple different accounts one of which is ibkr i have uh it's Waterhouse, or in the States, you guys call it Ameritrade. I have um, Wealth Symbol, Mumu. I have quite a lot. So each have their own specialties. I really like IBKR out of them all because you have so much information that they give you. So uh, again, a little bit more of a recommendation that you don't have to be just stuck to one broker. You can have multiple ones, uh, especially IBKR. You can just open it and you don't need to deposit anything, especially like of the amount of information that they give. I give a lot of information in my day-to-day -day videos from IBKR. So I have a link to them in the description below as well. That's my little wink wink plug. But aside from that though, um, because of me closing out my Palantir, I have more kind of room now in my account. And so I, I did some options. So I'm gonna go over some of my options. Like I said, um, I could be closing them out um, from now until this upcoming Friday. Typically, I don't do that. I like to hold up until expiry and I will be this is just kind of small chump change kind of stuff because as you can kind of see my cost basis, if I just hold all this, I'm basically getting like $140. Nothing really crazy, right? But still uh, going over starting off with SoFi. I did mention this one during my last video. If it was going to dip, which it is right now, I was going to sell 650 puts. So this is going to be a little bit more educational as well. So in case you guys do not know, by me selling five 650 puts, if it does go below 650 by the end of close of business day Friday, then I buy 500 shares at 650. Kind of a win-win if you ask me. You can always do that to a lot of stocks that you do generally like. On the flip side, if it does close above 650, which I do feel it is going to, then I get to keep the $16.47. So yay, I'm rich, but whatever. Like I said, I'm kind of risk adverse and still I wouldn't mind, you know, just trading uh, because like I said in my last update, I did do a option where I did get 200 shares of PayPal 
and then I sold that as well on Monday, made some pretty good profit while it was running up because I had a weird feeling that Monday was going to be a, a fairly good day for that stock um, because it did have a nice rebound, but still moving on lucid so lucid i did sell uh, five 350 calls and so in this account i don't have any lucid so essentially you can kind of see that as naked and so i did sell a naked call meaning if it does go up above 350 by the end of this friday and closes there then essentially i am shorting 500 shares of lucid flip side i don't see that happening i see it kind of staying below 350 and so ultimately if that does happen then i just get to keep this 44 dollars 62 so yay extra premium but still it is what it is that's kind of the risk adverse side of me lucid though um, again i can go into a lot of depth on exactly why i'm doing these but lucid is on the verge of breaking below that 50-day moving average so it is going to be a full technical breakdown similar to what is happening with sofi and then palantir so no hate towards palantir i know some people own it and whatever else i like it i like it as a good stock but if you look at generally where Palantir is, where do I have Palantir here? So Palantir, over this last, let's say, one year, this is craziness. Very, very crazy. And I get that they are doing a lot of good things, but at the same time, this isn't justified. So luckily enough, I actually did close out my position at a very advantageous time. I closed it at uh, $33.77. So very good swing uh, for that. But still, uh, like I said, I really like Palantir, just it's too, too high um, as of right now. So I did do a laddered approach somewhat. So I did sell three $36 calls. So once again, if it does close above 36, then I'm shorting 300 shares of Palantir. And I would be definitely more than willing to do that, especially above $36. So right now it's not much of a premium. So $26.77. Then I did do one of 34.50. And so similarly, if it does close above 34.50, then I am shorting it at 34.50. This one's a little bit higher of a premium. So uh, as you can kind of see, I got $53, give or take. So 53 cents per option. So if it does close above 34.50, yes, I'm shorting 100 shares, but my average as of uh, based on all this would be fairly good because I would be getting that premium, right? Whenever you're selling a call or a put, you are essentially keeping that regardless of the outcome, right? So this is kind of my layout right now. You do have a lot of them down um, because that does factor in my commission so yeah like i said i'm really going to be watching a lot of stocks and i know it sounds bad or not bad but somewhat i don't like this uh place so stock twits very toxic place but at the same time i like to just pop on here and then you can kind of see the stocks that are moving and similarly you can this is how you can find overreactions so for instance this stock right here um i don't know what's happening with this is me just going on the fly. Um, see, sometimes it's glitching. Why is it showing 900? Obviously, they probably did a reverse stock split. Oracle, so it did have a high today of, I think it's $162 or whatever. That would have been a perfect opportunity um, because, again, if you feel it's kind of capped out to sell a call. But once again, you sometimes win some, you lose some, didn't catch it in time. Um, so Ali Financial, and this one, if you do feel it is a little bit of an overreaction, which where it is now, you can always sell a put. Um, so again, that's kind of the inverse mentality, but I like to do those on Thursday and Friday. And so, yeah, um, there's that's a little bit more of a synopsis on exactly what I have been doing, because like I said, I wanna add transparency, kind of rebrand to financial journey, and go over some of the trades that I'm doing and just try to educate, right? Because you don't have to do the exact same trades as I do, but typically just find stocks that is very volatile, whether it be uh, right this and or potentially even Robinhood. Like I said, Robinhood is a very good stock to do options on because it is very volatile. And so, yeah, if you really do like Robinhood as well, then you can always sell puts because going back over to the one day at the very bottom right here, 
Typically, the lower it is, that's the more advantageous time to sell puts. Opposite happens. So the high side, you sell calls. Um, again, there's a certain level of risk involved, but you can always buy and sell um, calls or puts. So buying does require you to pay a premium, not get a premium. There is a certain level of kind of a risk involved uh, for that. And yeah, based on the technicals, I'm sure I could make a lot more money on just by selling or by buying calls and puts, but the level of attention that you would need to to do that, it's it's too much for me to do day trading, YouTube videos, it is just next level stuff. So this is why I like to just simply sell my calls, puts, like I said, get between like $500 ish as a benchmark every single week just by doing options and then yeah so be it so let me know your thoughts on what stocks i've been doing options on and what have you been kind of doing um one negative i guess of ibkr it'd be really nice to hide my account number but then it hides everything else right here um so kind of defeats the purpose if that makes sense of adding transparency and all the other fun jazz so let me know your thoughts don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe and with all that appreciate all of you watching